to make a video. One sec here, I'm just getting on this corner. Um, I wanted to make a video about Holly Sniper. Uh, this truck I'm currently driving, an old Chevy pickup that customer built. Uh, it's very homemade built. Uh, cannot see out of the mirror, holy crap. Um, What's, what's neat about this truck is like it was built by like an old uh, circle track racer so some of the stuff is very very race like um, but the whole thing with the truck was he wanted to make sure that it was reliable and uh, that is him and his wife could go drive it so he wanted to put a holly sniper a holly sniper system on it and he did he did most of the work himself uh, and uh, you know, was asking me lots of questions and stuff, and, and uh, kind of gave my hand. But when he installed it, he wasn't really ha uh, happy with his with his with his final result. I guess um, the base setup on the handheld just wasn't giving him the the drivability, the you know, the startup that that he was looking for. Uh, versus uh, to get like a Rochester car before or something. Um, but what? So what's in this thing? It, it's it's quite simple. It's just uh, 305 small block Chevy uh, with a mild cam in it. Like it's a Vortec 305, so it's got the 305 Vortec heads. So this thing is sitting on like a S10 chassis, I believe. It's pretty cool, like. I mean, I'm cruising down the highway here. It says I'm going about 125 miles an hour, but that's not right. I'm just, I'm maybe doing 60. And it's cruising along just nicely. Um, I gotta adjust this mirror one sec. There we go, I could not even see Thing has such a bad blind spot when you try to when you try to change lanes. But um, anyway, so he was what he, what he gets. It, what, what was happening is what happens with a lot of these snipers. Not a lot, but sometimes when when guys what the expectation is, you put the handheld on, you do the base setup, and you just drive it and it learns. And while that might work for a lot of guys, it doesn't always work out for everybody. And uh, what can happen is you'll get weird spots in like your fuel map when it's learning. And what I find is the biggest complaint is like, it'll either start up and die, which is a one really big one, or another one is it'll die coming up to a light. And guys will adjust the idle, they'll play with this and that. But it really comes down to just the fuel map not being 100% right. So guys, uh, you know, you'll see online on Craigslist, Kijiji, Facebook, Marketplace, you can see guys selling or bashing uh, Holly snipers or similar EFI systems. Um, but realistically, they can only do so much. Like they've come a long way, but some engines are just not happy fully with the self-learning capabilities I find. Um, as you can see right now, I have, I have the laptop uh, hooked up. And I'm going for a spin because that's what, like I said, that's what he was complaining of. Uh, and usually what it is, is a lower part of the map here, or uh, the, the fuel map, it, it's too lean. So when, when the idle comes down, it hits that lean spot so fast, and then it can't recover. So I find if you just, you have to go in with a laptop. So if you're thinking about installing a sniper, or you are ha or already have installed a sniper, you're having issues like this your best bet is to find someone that's you know fairly like familiar with with laptop tuning on a, on a sniper system or a, a terminator system or something like that because the handheld tunes are just are almost like one step up from a carburetor and on some engines they're not even that good so sometimes the expectations of the handheld tune are a little high and people aren't happy. And, uh, and rightly so, sometimes the way they advertise it, it kind of makes you believe that you can just slap 
the, the sniper on there and just let itself learn and, it, and, it, and it's happy. So I can kind of get why, why people get frustrated with them. Um, I've installed quite a few units and, I, and I've noticed too with, with a lot of installs is it comes down to uh, really just not, not proper setup. Uh, another big thing is people are trying to fix mechanical issues with with uh, with their engines with EFI. So if if, if the car is not going to run properly with a carburetor with a properly working carburetor, it's not going to run properly with EFI. EFI doesn't fix any issues. It sometimes actually makes makes them more apparent than a carburetor does because they're a little bit more sophisticated and they're trying to make them run perfectly and it, it, it just causes like hunting issues and stuff like that. Another another issue that a lot of guys will have is uh, not enough engine vacuum I find. Uh, I think Holly advertises down to five inches of vacuum but I'm going to tell you right now if you expect to hook up a Holly sniper on an engine that has like less than 10 inches of vacuum with a handheld Chances are you're going to have issues. Some guys might get lucky. I'm not sure. Um, but if you if you plan on just throwing on a sniper with a big cam and just hoping for the best, I, that thing is not that thing's not going to run any better than a carburetor, maybe even worse. So you know, it's all about expectations versus reality. I think when it comes to this stuff, uh, I, I personally like. There's a lot of systems on the market. Holly seems to be my favorite. While I have had issues in the past, especially the last couple of years, Holly still seems to be the best for tunability in my eyes. Um, you know, with, between the Sniper and the Terminator systems, those are the two I'm most familiar with. Um, Terminator, like I have that a Chevelle. If you follow me on Instagram, I have a Chevelle coming up, Supercharged 383. And if you've seen my other videos, I've talked about it. That thing, it runs awesome. Uh, uh, my, I was supposed to go on the dyno about a week ago. And I drove it all the way to the dyno off uh, a base tune I did, and, and it ran pretty good. Actually, it was tuning, letting do some data logs on the way, and I got it running really good. But I got all the way to the dyno, and the dyno was broken. So, um, just it was just one of those things. So, but it was actually good because I had some other little bugs I wanted to get uh, worked out. So that thing's actually rebooked on the dyno. Uh, everything's fixed up on the dyno, so I'm getting it back there. But um, something like that, obviously you can't expect to throw a self-learning system on and just you know, expect a miracle that everything's going to work out fine. But uh, it really, again, it really comes down to expectations versus reality. So I'm not a pro tuner by any means. I don't consider myself a pro tuner. But uh, you know, I do play with a lot of Holly snipers. Um, I find they work really good on boosted applications, you know, blow through setups. Um, but the biggest thing uh, that guys, and I, I know any pro tuner is going to tell you this, before you start making radical adjustments, you got to make sure your fuel tables are good. You got to make sure that you're not trying to compensate on other adjustments by issues with your fuel table. If, if, you, if your fuel table's off, then making adjustments elsewhere, it's like it's like chasing your tail. You're, you're gonna just keep going back and forth, trying to fix things. But really, at the end of the day, most of the issues are gonna be in your fuel table. So that's why, you know, putting a laptop on it, seeing where things are at, as you can see, this is where it's learning, and it's getting really close to being, this fuel table being happy. So once I get this all locked in, and, and everything's smoothed out, then I know if I have other issues, like lower in the table here, where it's not gonna learn, that I can go in and smooth those out, and you know, try cold starting, hot starting, and then playing with my other adjustments to try to make, make an engine happy. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not about what you think the engine wants, it's about what the engine wants. So, you know, if, if so-and-so, you know, has this setting on their, their, their truck or car, or so-and-so has this setting on their idle, doesn't mean it's gonna work perfectly for you in your setup, you know, unless it's exactly the same. And even then, who knows, right? So, make sure you you get that fuel, that fuel table right, and then make adjustments that your engine likes. It's a little bit of trial and error. The more you do, the more you realize you know, you kind of get better at it. Sometimes the O2 sensor doesn't think, pick up things fast enough, so you kind of got to do it by feel. Uh, cold start can be really hard sometimes, uh, playing, you know, playing with cold start. Uh, but again, a lot of the times, people have issues.
issues with school start uh, because their base fuel map isn't 100% right or something else is messed up. So there she is, she's running perfect now and really all it came down to was just the fuel map uh, had to go through and, and clean up at the bottom of the map because when it idled down it would come past that lean spot and then it just couldn't recover. That's why it was stalling at uh, lights and stuff for him. And, that, and I, I should I'll have to cold start it in the morning but his uh, cold start issue, same thing. Sometimes he would start it up and then it would ramp down and just stall. That should be all taken care of. Number one, just get those fuel maps cleaned up. And if you don't have the know-how, see if you could find someone in your car club, maybe a local tuner who can take care of these issues for you. You've invested a lot of money into this sniper unit. You gotta make sure you're getting the most of it. It's just kind of like what it comes down to with carburetors. You, a lot of guys will throw a carburetor on and just expect it to be perfect. And sometimes it is just like the sniper. Sometimes the base calibration will be fine. It's just like carburetors. Sometimes they're not, sometimes they are. But anyone that's jetted carburetors and pl played around like that, know it's a lot of work. But when it comes to when it comes to EFI and, and, and this kind of stuff, guys get a little nervous, you know, with their laptops and electronics and stuff. But really, a sniper EFI is just like a carburetor with a thousand jets in it. It's just lots of adjustments, lots of tweaking, but at the end of the day, there's no reason that that sniper EFI can't run better than a carburetor. It, it just, it's way more sophisticated. There's a lot of powerful technology in a sniper EFI, just like the same technology they use in the Terminator systems and stuff like that. Guys are running you know, thousands of horsepower on software, just like what you're running in your sniper. Obviously, this is throttle by injection versus port injector injection, but Again, the software is the same. The adjustability is the same. It's amazing what you can do with these. So I'm going to let this thing cool off for the night. I'm going to try it in the morning, but I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be just fine. I just had to clean up that fuel map, take it for a spin, and Eddie will be quite happy He'll be able to drive around with his wife. You got to dig this thing, though. It is pretty, it is pretty cool. Pretty cool-looking truck. Very homemade, but you know what I mean? Like it's Like the seats are cool. Where's Eddie right there? He used to be a racer. See his little, I don't know if we can, there's a bit of a glare, but. Number 69, what a legend, oh my gosh. But there you go, guys. If you have any questions about uh, EFI, any issues you have, comment below, maybe I can give you some tips or stuff like that. And if you guys like this EFI, I do want to plan on doing some more EFI setup videos and stuff for the Sniper or Atomic EFI. So let me know if that's what you're interested in and issues you guys are having. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.